Hey, my name is Ted Crete, and I am the Geospatial Specialist from Multicopter Warehouse. This is the first video in a three-part video series where I will walk you through an end-to-end -end workflow with the Zenmuse L1, step by step. Let's get started with mission planning. When creating a mission on the DJI Pilot app, we're going to be staying mostly in the Mission Flight tab. Now there are two ways that you can start out when creating a mission plan. You can either create a route on the tablet itself, or you can do a KML import from Google Earth or a similar data-based mapping. Now some of the benefits from a KML import that I've found is you're able to plan before you go out into the field. You can get exact lines and area for your mapping. And uh, you're working on your computer instead of a touch screen. One of the downfalls though, however, is even if you plan this on the computer, just like we saw here, you are going to have to update the flight parameters in accordance whatever you need. You can either do that beforehand by uh, turning your tablet on before, or you can do it out in the field if you have Wi-Fi. Now the other way that we're going to start is creating a route. We're going to start with mapping. Now one of the things that I've found is regardless of whether you are creating a map from a KML or you're creating a map from scratch like we are here, is to download your area of opportunity within the map box of the controller. I'll show you how to do that at the end. So when doing this on the controller, you just tap and it creates a small little box. You can manipulate the sides of the box like so by pressing, holding, and dragging to make sure that you have what, all of the area that you need. If you're looking for a polygon rather than a square, all you'd have to do is press this and it will move out and continue to do whatever polygon that you want. If you want to delete any of the waypoints that you've just created, all you have to hit is this little trash can button. This X will delete all of the waypoints that we've made thus far. If you tap these chevrons, we can get into the actual parameters of the mapping mission thus far. First thing to do is name, something unique that you can see and recognize in the SD card. Now when we're selecting the camera, when you're selecting the camera, uh, we're going to be talking about the Zenmuse L1 LiDAR mapping. However, there is a photogrammetry tab here. Now, when you select the photogrammetry, it will function exactly the same as if you were using a Phantom 4 RTK. Uh, the fixed angle, constant angle of attack, it will not take uh, complex orthos like the P1 uh, without some serious uh, crisscrossing and multiple passes. But we're going to talk about LiDAR mapping. The point cloud density is a great reference for how much detail your scan will actually pick up. A dense point cloud is somewhere between 600 to 1000 points per meter squared. This value is directly affected by overlap, height, and speed. If you're looking for a point cloud that's less dense than that, all you have to do is manipulate one of these three values and it will usually decrease your point cloud density to something that you would uh, something that's more manageable, or if you want a denser point cloud, more detail, then all you have to do is fly a little lower and a little slower. This ortho GSD value is, base, is the basis for accuracy when reconstructing an orthograph from the photos only. So this is only going to be from the photos taken in congruence with the LiDAR that you fly with the Zenmuse L1. This has nothing to do with the LiDAR point cloud, so if you aren't planning on doing a reconstruction with the photos, you can kind of ignore this. Now, if this is something that you need, uh, I highly recommend looking up ground sampling size or the GSD. Uh, if you need any more informa uh, information about that, feel free to reach out. The IMU calibration, uh, if you turn this on, it will automatic automatically calibrate the Zenmuse L1 during the mission. Uh, the Zenmuse L1, the internal IMU, needs to calibrate every 100 seconds of flight to give you the most accurate data possible. If this isn't selected, then you will have to manually calibrate uh, every 100 seconds of flight, or the accuracy of your ortho cannot be guaranteed. 
Now the Terrain Follow is a feature in conjunction with DJI Terra Pro that allows you to get closer to the ground scans in areas that have great elevation change, like mountains or hills or valleys. If you would like a process on how uh, that is done, uh, feel free to reach out to me in the questions or um, after the video. The ASL ATL is uh, the basis for what this flight route altitude is going to be based on. So relative to takeoff point means that the flight route altitude is going to be 320 feet above where it took off from. And then if we move to ASL, it will be whatever altitude in feet uh, ellipsoidally that, um, the, that you program in. Usually we wanna keep it at relative to takeoff point. In my experience, this is the easiest and most accurate way to get a flight route height. Flight route altitude, uh, DJI recommends uh, between 50 to 100 meters uh, for best accuracy and best results. Uh, I found anywhere between 100 to 250 feet is best for not only reflectivity, but also for efficiency. The target surface to takeoff point. What this value is, is if you are taking off from an elevated or a lower position, uh, then the surface that you are trying to scan, uh, this is the difference between those values. So if you're taking off from a hill and trying to scan a valley or vice versa, what this value does is it allows the drone to know that you are taking off higher or lower than uh, what the scanning surface is so that it can accurately get this flight route altitude to where it needs to be. The takeoff speed, uh, I recommend turning this to max. Uh, this is the speed of travel from the takeoff point to the start point. So it has no bearing on the speed during the data collection that's on this next, so speed. The flight speed is recommended to be anywhere between eight and 12 meters a second or 18 to 27 miles per hour. But uh, if you don't need to be that efficient and you need a denser point cloud, I recommend uh, flying a little slower as if you were going to penetrate vegetation. Uh, I would recommend flying between 15 miles an hour, but because we're not, I'll leave it at 20. Now this elevation optimi optimization is again a feature only for the ortho photos. What this does is if you select it on, like I just did, after the mission, uh, the drone will fly to the center and takes extra ortho photos um, at various angles, trying to um, optimize the elevation accuracy of the rendered picture. But again, if you're going to be using this primarily for a LiDAR, then you don't need to select this and save time. When we're talking about the upon completion, this is what the drone is going to do uh, after the mission is complete. Now, take in mind, that um, if you do select return to home, it will turn around and go directly where it took off from. So if you are flying a long uh, linear mission, uh, that may be turning around and going all the way back one to two miles, or you can turn it to land where it's at, uh, go to a route start point if the route start point is significantly farther away from the return to home, or just sit and hover and have you manually take control. This is something that inspection uses a lot. Um, if they're going to fly a mapping route and then fly on the way back taking manual photos for inspection purposes. Now into the advanced settings. The side overlap has to be at least 50% to allow for proper control and corresponding passes. But that doesn't mean that it can't be more um, if you want a denser point cloud. The course angle is what angle that these flight routes are going to be flown over the grid, as you can see here. The only reason that you would have to change this is if there is a prevailing wind uh, over when you are flying your mission. Uh, it is my personal preference to fly parallel to the prevailing wind so as not to be blown off course during its grid uh, and not miss anything. But there are others that say that you should fly directly perpendicular to the wind to extend your battery life. Um, this you will find with a little bit of trial and error and see which best, uh, which 
method works best for you. Now the margin is how much of the surrounding area that's not within your blue square that the drone is going to take into account so that it can collect all of the edges and not miss any of the data for you. This photo mode is again just for the ortho photos. I would keep it a timed intervolt shot unless you're going to be flying manually and then you can switch it into distant interval shot. Now the return mode on is how many returns or light pulses for each single point. Um, a single or a dual will give you the highest point cloud, highest density point cloud, where a triple return is where you're going to get the best vegetation penetration. So if you're trying to get underneath trees or through complex structures, triple return is going to be the best frame for you. The sampling rate is the energy of the beam that the pulses are. Uh, you're not going to have to mess with that. I would keep it at the default unless you have a very particular reason. The scanning mode is uh, how the LiDAR is going to be collected. Now, uh, there are two modes here, repetitive and non-repetitive. Repetitive scans uh, in a flat beam uh, back and forth as it's taking its LiDAR, uh, LiDAR pulses. This is the most accurate if your end results that you're looking for are on the ground. So for your DSMs, your digital contours, or anything else like that, you're going to want to be in repetitive mode. Now non-repetitive, uh, it scans in a circular field of view rather than a flat beam. This is best for complex structures and oblique angles. So if you're trying to do inspection or trying to get uh, accurate 3D models of complex structures, you're going to want to be in non-repetitive. Then this RGB coloring is always good to turn on if you don't have uh, a need to. It will take, this is what turns on those ortho photos. Um, if you don't have this on, uh, the drone will just collect the LiDAR and it will be completely in grayscale. Now that's it for the mapping. We'll do one more When you're creating a flight route for a linear flight mission, there most of these are exactly the same except for the linear flight mission. Linear flight missions work exceedingly well if you have a long, narrow field of view that you need to collect, such as with a road or a power line. Now when you're creating this, all you have to do is select points along whatever area that you need to collect on, and then update the parameters after you've selected uh, the center line of your route. Now we're going to keep this named how it is. We're going to select the camera just like we did with our mapping. Now a single flight route is if you want the drone only to make one single pass and not several passes along the way. Um, this is not recommended if you want a detailed uh, scan of whatever you're scanning. Again, the point cloud density and the GSD are, very, are at the same thing as uh, for mapping. Now, one thing with the linear flight mission is there are two tabs here, flight band and flight route. You need to update both of these as they are both components of the same route uh, that you are planning. This left and right extension length is how long from the center point that you want your scan to extend. I usually like to make sure that it's equal, but if you need to extend uh, one side longer than the other, that's how you would do it. Now, this is a very important feature, the flight plan cutting distance. Just like I said at the beginning uh, with the IMU calibration, uh, the Zenmuse L1 has to calibrate every 100 seconds of flight. Now, what that means is that um, the auto calibrations are only going to start and end and during a turn, and so a linear flight mission doesn't have any of those turns. What this flight band cutting distance means is it will cut your section into starts and stops, allowing the, the LiDAR to calibrate as needed. So the best way to do this is if you, um, to calculate this, is to take your flight speed, uh, times it by 100 seconds, or and that will be the distance that you need to cut your... Um, flight bands into. Payload settings here are exactly the same um, as the mapping, so we're not going to go into that, but as we said before, say if we were going to do a power line inspection, 
this is something that I would choose. We'll go into the flight route. Now with the flight route, um, you can see here, because we've broken it into sections, um, these little figure eights are going to be IMU calibrations for the L1, including the center line, as you can see, um, it will tighten up the, um, the flight route versus here. The ASL ATL is exactly the same that we saw before. Surface to takeoff point is exactly the same as mapping and all of the rest of these are similar. The boundary optimization tab increases the area at the edge similar to margin in the mapping mission that we just saw, as you can see here. Now the IMU calibration again, it starts this auto calibration without it. As you turn it off, you can see those figure eights disappear and you'll have to do those manually if you want to continue your uh, utmost accuracy. The photo mode is exactly the same as the mapping and upon completion is the same. One last thing before we end. If you go into here, up at the top is where you're going to offload, download offline maps. This is what I was talking about in the beginning of the video. If I'm going to be flying in this area, I'm going to down, want to download this map so that I don't need um, internet or any kind of hotspot to view this uh, with high resolution. It's always good to hear to make sure that your geo unlocking zones uh, are unlocked as well because without a geo unlocking zone you will need uh, some kind of hotspot or internet to do a manual override for a geo zone unlocking. Thank you for watching and please stay tuned for the rest of this video series.